We have been dealing with record-breaking cold temperatures for much of the United States over the past couple of weeks, but there will be changes to that as we go into this upcoming week because much warmer weather is going to be arriving to the United States. But before that happens, we are going to have to deal with the threat of an ice storm and along with the threat of some heavy snowfall in parts of the Midwest and as well as back through the Northeast. We'll be breaking down all that for you in this forecast in addition to the temperature swing that's about to happen here across the United States. And we'll begin with the 500 millibar chart in the temperature realm. These are your temperature anomalies. Notice we have an Arctic air mass that is sitting back over on the East Coast this morning. And that is where all the cold air is basically sitting, even though it's cold down here in the Southern Plains. And that cold air, by the way, is from more of a surface-based area of stronger winds coming from the North. And that's leading to colder air behind the cold frontal boundary. But more importantly, as we go into the later half of the weekend into early next week, notice we're gonna start to see warm air dominating in our mid latitude levels here of the atmosphere. And what that's actually gonna lead to is much warmer weather for much of the eastern tier of the United States. Meanwhile, we'll have a trough feature back down in the four corner states in the southwest United States. This will be pulling a lot of moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico. That'll lead to a lot of rainfall, potential for some snow and freezing rain as we go into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and even Wednesday of this upcoming week. Eventually, that low pressure center will shift to the east as we go later into the week, and we'll eventually get the threat of some showers and storms in the southeast, maybe even some severe weather to go along with that. So there's going to be a lot of impacts from this one particular system and a lot of this can also be viewed on the jet stream the jet stream gives us an idea of the weather patterns that are happening across the united states notice that low pressure system back over in the northeast today that is again with all the arctic air over that direction strong upper level winds associated with the jet stream that doesn't mean anything for us at the surface we have around 150 to 200 mile per hour winds aloft that has nothing to do with us near the surface that's more of something to do with if you're flying like an airplane there will be some turbulence that's what we're looking at across those areas but notice over here to the west Again, we have that ridge in place that is going to be dominating across the eastern tier of the United States on the later half of this weekend. That will shift off to the east, and that will be the cause of the big changes to our weather pattern, allowing for a low pressure system to move into the southwest United States, which will bring most of the impacts across areas like the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the southern and central plains. And then eventually behind this low pressure system, that one will move off to the north and east through the Midwest. We'll get another low pressure system back down in the southwest United States. And so we'll be basically watching two different disturbances this week originating from this meridional jet stream which is the curvature that you're seeing here that's a meridional a zonal would be straight across so just kind of comparing those two again but meridional usually means we have a more active weather pattern and we'll be seeing that especially monday through thursday of this week and that low pressure system that comes in going into tuesday into wednesday will bring the chance for some showers and storms in the southeast united states as we go into wednesday and thursday i'll be breaking that down for you on the future radar here in just a moment and again this is more closer to the surface in terms of that arctic air again notice it's really dominating across anywhere from the central and southern plains back to the east coast but notice as we go into early next week things change a lot we'll be dealing with a much warmer air mass closer to the surface across much of the eastern tier of the united states in fact almost the entire country will be dealing with around or above average temperatures the only exceptions really will be back down here in the southwest united states back on the west coast and perhaps some areas that are going to be seeing some showers and some thunderstorms across parts of the central and southern plains but again it'll be more hit or miss there by the later half of the week we even could see some record-breaking high temperatures across the ohio valley in the northeast as that warm air mass builds in but that becomes a little bit more uncertain since we're still talking about seven days out what is a bit more certain though is that cold air that's in the midwest it's going to be leaving here pretty soon once we go into monday and a tuesday notice the warmer air will start to usher out of the gulf of mexico 60s across the entire dixie alley and also back into tennessee and kentucky there will be some melting as we go into the middle half of the week by the later half the week so closer to around thursday these will be your high temperatures areas in the ohio valley will start to skyrocket into the 50s and 60s and even by friday we'll have some warm air back near areas like maryland and as well as back through washington dc and southern new jersey that'll open the door there for some 60s and even across the midwest we'll be dealing with temperatures that'll be supportive enough for some melting of that snow and even some ice that'll be on the ground across those areas so all of you can exchange your all you can eat snow buffets across the midwest and the ohio valley for some ice cubes because we'll be looking at some ice accumulation here across parts of the United States this week and this will primarily be a concern as we go into tomorrow and as well as Monday across parts of the United States. So let's break that down for you here in detail. Beginning with Sunday, we'll have a dominant high pressure system across much of the United States. 1,042 millibars for a low pressure system, by the way. That's pretty intense overall. Once we go closer to Sunday night and to Monday morning, we'll start to get that southerly wind here across the uh, southern tier of the United States. That'll lead to some moisture 
moisture leading to some freezing rain across parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, southern Missouri, back into southeast parts of Kansas, and even north Texas, we'll be dealing with some freezing rain Sunday night into Monday morning. This will lead to some problems, especially across these areas. They could see as much as a quarter of an inch of ice. That could be close to at least causing travel impacts and as well as some isolated power outages. Once we go throughout Monday afternoon, a lot of that freezing rain will start to taper down as warmer air rises to the north. This will lead to more of a cold rain more than anything, perhaps even a few thunderstorms back down in parts of east and southeast Texas. Once we go into Monday evening to Tuesday morning, we'll have to watch for some isolated freezing drizzle across areas from Illinois back into Ohio. That could lead to some isolated ice accumulation, perhaps causing some slick roadways, which again could lead to some travel impacts. Southern Michigan as well in the same boat there. You'll be looking at some minor travel impacts potentially Tuesday morning. In addition to this, some light to moderate snow will be possible from Nebraska back into Wisconsin. That snow will spread out further to the east as we go into late Tuesday. So from Iowa back into parts of New York, we'll be looking at some light to moderate snowfall. By Wednesday, that system moves into the northeast, so some light snow possible across parts of New England. That secondary low pressure system will develop, and this one in particular will bring the potential for some showers and storms across the southern tier of the United States, primarily from Texas back into areas like the Dixie Alley. In addition to this, we also could see the threat of isolated severe weather. It's a good friendly reminder that the exact details of anything like severe weather right now are pretty unknown since we are still multiple days out, but there will be at least be a marginal threat I would expect somewhere along the Gulf Coast with some damaging winds, perhaps an isolated tornado or two being possible. I don't think we'll have an outbreak out of this unless we see some major changes to the trends because right now, this low pressure system, even by Thursday currently, looks to be a lot weaker overall. It will have some components of instability, maybe even a little bit of shear, but nothing really organized in terms of a severe weather threat. Something else that'll be pretty concerning out of this, though, will be the flooding potential since we'll have endless rain here across the Gulf Coast. That could lead to several inches of rain in some areas. Now, in terms of ice accumulation, we'll be looking at a multiple areas for ice. The main concern right now would be from southern Michigan back through central Illinois and into parts of north Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and southern Missouri. Now, the main areas, though, out of this entire region would be right in here. So these areas in particular could see upwards of a quarter of an inch of ice. I wouldn't even rule out a couple areas seeing upwards of a half an inch of ice, which would definitely lead to at least isolated power outages and travel impacts. So those things will all have to be taken into consideration if you're in these areas. Again, any ice that does accumulate, though, going into Sunday night into Monday morning across these areas, most of it will likely melt by Monday evening. If it's not melted by then, it will melt by Tuesday morning because of all that warm air rising to the north. The only exception to that would be potentially on, like, bridges and overpasses. That would be something to watch for as well across those areas. And also, for the next several days, we don't really have any flying trampoline advisories anywhere in the United States. Overall, the winds actually will be quite light across the United States. Even Monday, I mean, the only day I'd be watching for if you're looking for flying trampolines would be Monday afternoon with wind gusts around 20 to 30 miles per hour from Texas back into the Midwest, but that's really not supportive for flying trampolines. So good news there. Again, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you've not already and like the video.